Happy Father's Day to you who are fathers and who have fathered children. Happy Father's Day. Amen.
can't think of a better way for fathers to be speaking to the church than surrounded by rocket ships and, <laughs> and lights because often that's what we are to our children is beacons to a way forward. And so what I'm hoping to share with you over the next few minutes is what my path has been like and how being a father has impacted me. As we heard from the scripture, becoming a father is an act of faith. We leap into this not really knowing what we're doing, but we'll never admit that. <laughs> and we make it up as we go along, trusting that our father is guiding us along the way. And I can honestly say I am a father to Kevin and Kyle because I went to church. I mean that quite literally. Because if I had not gone to the campus ministry service the first Sunday of my junior year, I wouldn't have met Kim, at least not in the same way. And I wouldn't have found that partner who has been so instrumental in being a father to our children. And we got to know each other over time. We went on a date in December after we met in August, and she'll be happy to tell you that whole story of why it took me so long. <laughs> and it's been 33 years since. And, and that has enabled me to be a father to two really incredible men now. In the church, we're taught of a father's love for his children. The songs we just sung, talking about how that love is enough. God's grace is sufficient. And that is a lesson that we try to teach our children. And coming to church and being a father in the church has deepened my appreciation for that concept of a heavenly father. Because when you're a father, you understand what it must mean to have a child that you love very much, to watch them go through pain and suffering, and to try to help them along the way and teach them how they could live their lives. As parents, we influence our children in countless ways daily, and the way we choose to live our lives is probably the best example we can give them for how they might live theirs. Both our sons were born in Durham, North Carolina, where we lived, and we baptized them as infants in our church when we lived there. And that congregation had adopted Micah 6-8 as its motto. He has told you, mortal, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God? And that's the translation from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. That is still my favorite passage from the Bible. And it is the motto that I try to live by. It is really hard to do, but I struggle with it every day. Probably the hardest part is the walking humbly part, to be perfectly honest. And I'm hopeful that by the way we live out our pledge here in this church to be present, to engage with each other in prayer, to give our gifts and our service and our witness is a way of acting out the admonition that we've been given in that passage. But in the church, we are fathers and parents, not just to our own children, but to each other and each other's children. We make that pledge every time we baptize a person into our congregation. We pledge to help raise that child in this community that we have been called to create. And so therefore, we're not just parents in our own families, we're parents to all. The people who choose to come within these walls and the people who do not. We go out into the community. We are called to go out into the community and show what a father's love is for his children. And that means that the opportunities we are given here 
don't just stop at being involved with the things that our children pursue. But we are here to provide that guidance and that mentorship to all the people that walk through our doors and to the people that don't choose to do so. That has been a wonderful gift that this church has given me. And I can honestly say that Father is the best job that I have ever had. And what could be greater than that? But that job description has changed. Now that my children are grown, and I don't yet have grandchildren to, um, to dote on yet, I have been called to be a father to others. And I hope that all of you will see that we are called to be parents to all the people that are here, sharing the Father's love that we have received. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So be, being a father is like a roller coaster of, of highs and lows, celebrations like graduations and victories, and in other times, injuries and losses. But I wouldn't trade in any of those moments. Providing guidance, support, and love, helping to develop Tim and Matt into dependable, trustworthy young men is one of the greatest joys of my life. As a Christian, I've seen the importance of values like honesty, compassion, forgiveness, and humility. Modeling these values has enforced them for my boys and helped them to develop strong moral compasses. Bible lessons provide many insights on wise and effective parenting, such as the importance of discipline, the benefits of listening and understanding, and the value of teaching children to make wise choices. Three lessons I've learned, and I didn't always get these right. First, model the value of hard work and perseverance. Teach your children to work hard and never give up, even when things get difficult. Help them develop a strong work ethic and show them the rewards that come with persistence and determination. Two, show the importance of kindness and compassion. Encourage your children to be kind and compassionate towards others, treating everyone with respect. Teach them to be generous in giving and to find joy in helping others. The third lesson is the power of positive thinking. Teach your children to focus on the positive, even in challenging situations. Help them develop a positive mindset and show them how to find good things in every situation. I encourage my boys to see challenges as opportunities for growth and learning rather than setbacks or failures. For me, the greatest joy of fatherhood is the love and bond I share with Tim and Matt. Watching them grow and develop, experiencing firsts and being there to support them through all life's ups and downs, brings immense joy and fulfillment to my life. Finally, I have to say that being a good father isn't always easy. No, it isn't usually easy. Life is challenging. My boys can be challenging. But together with Shelly, Tim, and Matt, we've worked through life's challenges. 23 years of father, 27 years a husband, 31 years with my best friend. Did I get that math right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Ultimately, the joy and love we have as a family has made fatherhood awesome. Thank you all. As you may notice today, it's the magnificent six. <laughs> when Jeff gets here.
Good morning, everybody. So, uh, what Bill and Jess said, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, you know, for me, I'm blessed to be a father of, of three young children, Jake, Kendall, and Kyle. Um, you know, for me, uh, got married a little bit older in life, had kids a little bit older in life than, than most, right? So, um, kind of going through this path, uh, learning and understanding about being a dad, you know, it, it makes me feel complete, right? Knowing that I get to come home every day, the three amazing kids, right? Um, you know, everybody knows work's not always fun, work's tough, right? There's challenges um, that you go through. Um, but being able to come home to them and my wife every day makes it all worthwhile. Um, you know, the, the differences between your kids are, are unique and, 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 you know, to, they're all so different. Um, you know, so to, to try to guide them in different paths and, and go different ways and try to nurture what they like, what they don't like, trying to be able to, you know, give advice, you know, treat them differently in different areas because, you know, some might, you might be a little more firm with, some you might be a little more delicate with. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that I'm trying to, to learn and, and it's, it's a learning process for me for sure. Um, you know, the fortunate thing is that they all got my wife's beautiful blue eyes, so that's, what, that's, that's probably the, one of the best parts. Um, but they're also special and unique. Um, I try to encourage them the best I can. Um, I'm probably a little too hard on them. Um, I think they'll probably agree if you ask them. So I'm, I'm trying to learn how to be more patient and understanding. Um, and try to understand that they have their own paths, right? I can't, I can do my best to direct them. I can do my best to try to give them, you know, the advice that they need. Um, you know, but they, they're going to go their own path. They're going to learn um, their own way. And I just try to need to nurture that as best I can. Um, you know, so many peaks and valleys, right? Um, but, you know, they, they, I learn as much from them as I hope they learn from me. Um, as a Christian, right, I, I learned the importance of being patient and kind, you know, being a loyal husband and father. You know, I also learned the license, the life lessons that I'm going to teach them. Hopefully, they carry throughout uh, throughout adulthood, right? So Proverbs 22:6 states, "Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it." I pray that they continue to grow. I will continue to lead by example. Um, some of the lessons that you know, I hope that I, I leave behind and that they they continue on, you know, as they grow older and, and become adults is, you know, make commitment to God, pray as a family, eat as a family talk to each other, um, you know, make, make church a priority, right? With all that's happening in the world around us, um, you know, church needs to be a nice, safe, comfortable place to come and worship and talk and communicate. Um, I think one thing, uh, life's not all sunshine and rainbows. Um, it's hard, right? And there's different challenges that you face. Um, you're going to get knocked down many, many times. To teach them to get back up and move forward, they're going to make mistakes, be accountable for your actions, Work hard. Nobody's going to give anything to you, right? Work hard. Um, and the most important thing of all is, is love your family, right? Nothing's more important than family at the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are we doing? Good, 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 good. So, let me start by saying I'm happy to be alive today. So many things could have happened, but because of God's grace, he allows me to be alive today. A little bit about myself real quick. My dad and my mom decided to have nine kids, nine. So, six girls, three boys. Where do I come? Lazarus come forth, right? Well, I came forth from the last. So I'm the fourth, last, then I got three sisters younger than me. I can only say God bless my dad and my mom because uh, you think about going to church in a car, nine kids. You sit in, you sit out, you sit in, you sit out. That's what it was like in the back seat. Back then we had bench seats. So you could put three. Some of us know about, majority know about that. So uh, we went to church on Sundays. Whether I wanted to, yes or no, I had to go because I was a PK, pastor's kid. So every Sunday morning, I would get up at 6 o'clock in the mornings, and all nine of us have to pray. 
all night. But we had a little prayer meeting. Then you go to church for divine worship, and then you may have to go back in the evening for another worship service. Well, that's what I grew up with. But the young man just said, train the child in the way that he should grow, that when he gets older, he won't depart from it. Amen? So when I think about my father, I have to catch myself a lot because I grew up in church and the Lord blessed me with a wonderful wife and two kids. And my son was always in church with me during when I used to be active and he l l be in church. And they're continuing that. But let me just say from a spiritual point of view, first, I'll say, I think about the prodigal son. We know the story about that, the man who decided to go on his own, move out, dad, give me all what what belongs to me so that I can move on and do what I want to do. But when the hardship meet that young man out there, he said, you know what, I can't take this no more, so I'm going to go back home. That's my version of it. But the father was a father all along. So even though the young man left and went on his own, the young man says, you know what, I recognize something. I I, I messed up, so I'm going to go back home. But when I go back home, I will say, Father, I have sinned against you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, so treat me like a servant. But the scripture says, while he was on his way home, the father saw him from a distance. But the father greeted him with open arms. Because once you are a father, you will continue to be a father. That's just how it works. I don't know about the rest of fathers who just spoke, but when your children was born, did the doctor hand you a book and say, this is the manual for you to, yeah. So you know how they have pay as you go, we learn as we go. And there are some things that I saw my dad do, and I said, oh, God. I'm not going to do that to my son. I won't do that. I won't do that. But then I find myself doing the same thing. Because guess what? It made me who I am today. You know, um, visualize this. My dad's preaching. I'm in the audience and I'm talking to somebody else. And my dad was a musician also. So he's preaching and he saw me talking. He just told the band, play a song. And they start to play a song and he go like this. called me around and went around the back and of course he spoke to me and you know yeah he ministered to me you know and then tells me to go back inside and I must say amen for everything that I agree with and praise the Lord so here am I in church amen hallelujah praise God you know but it helped me it helped me there are times that I've had tough times and I needed to speak to someone But the first person came to my mind, guess who it was? My father. Because he would say, I might not have all the answers for you, but I will not steer you in the wrong way. And he said, whatever I cannot answer for you, let's pray about it. And it never fails. It never, never fails. So I'm happy to be a father. I'm happy to be a father for how many years? Quite a lot of years. And I'm happy to be a grandfather. Can you believe that? Grandfather. Yeah. Four grandsons and one girl. And it was funny. My my son was driving with the kids. And the littlest one, his name is Dean. He's three years old now. If you look at Dean, he looks very peaceful, but he's a very rough guy. And Dean was praying, Oh, Father God, help us as we drive. As we drive home, pray, God, that you will keep us. And he just kept going and going. And I'm like, that's Dean? God must have touched Dean's heart. (laughs) But what I'm trying to say is that when you train the child in the way that they should go, it will not depart. Even when you walk away from it. There was a time that I didn't want to go back to church. There was a time I did not go to church. And I felt like I was lost. And I found myself in a place of worship. And I sat at the back. total back. Let's just show you how God moves. I sat at the back of the church. No one's supposed to know me. No one at all. Sitting back there, minister preaches and everything, and one little skinny little girl, one skinny little girl came 
can I pray with you? Yeah, go ahead. And when she prayed, it was like about a three-minute small, short prayer she prayed with me. I was dealing with a lot of stuff, but I remember that when she was finished praying for me, I felt like I could take on the whole world. And so sometimes training your child in the right way, it helps out later on. God bless you. That's my time.